French nails. They are one of my favorite. They're absolutely beautiful, but why are they so hard to do? Black powder is one of the hardest to work with, and then combine it with French? Hmm, I've got a lot of tips and tricks that can help you master this design. Let's get started. So why is French so hard to do? Because, I mean, it looks so simple, right? It's just like one swoop line. It's hard to do because the product is curing. We're working with acrylic today, so that's what I'm going to talk about. It's hard really in any design, but French acrylic is the hardest. And the reason being is the product is trying to cure as you're working with it. So we do want to get a hard line. Most of the times when we're applying, everything's kind of soft and faded, especially with the ombre we've just come off of, right? But this is a sharp line. And the crisper it looks, the better it looks. So first we need the proper tools. You guys, I'm really good at designing products and creating products that we can use professionally, but I'm not that great at promoting it. So <laughs> I'm going to show you my kit. I do have this available right now. And inside of it is files and a beautiful professional brush. That's what we're going to use today, but we're also going to use the files. And that's why I'm pulling it out now so we can use one of these files to buff the natural nail. Okay, oh, you can also buy them separately. We're selling the brush and the files separately now at some of your request. Okay, and you can find that at nailcareer.com. Okay, so we're going to start by buffing the surface of the natural nail. As you can see, I've gone ahead and I've done four of the fingers, and I'm going to show you how to do one. So you can sort of see where we're going as we make one. So I'm going to take my, you can use the coarse or the medium file. These are the proper grits for buffing the natural nail. When you use this though, use it very gently. So don't just like carve in. These are professional files. They're made of very high-end paper. They'll last you quite some time, but you don't need to go crazy to get where you're going. You can just do a nice light buff. I'm just gonna get me glasses. Okay, so that's what we're gonna start with. So I want to buff the surface of the natural nail. Now I've got a little bit of acrylic on this. I do my nails at least once a week because I'm doing different designs. And when I do that, when I remove a previous design to do a new design like this, I just file it down to a very, very thin layer to protect my natural nail. So there is a very thin layer of acrylic on there, and that's what the coarse file can be good to buff. When you get into the natural area, because there's a little bit of natural nail there, I'm gonna use the medium. And I'm just gonna carefully, I pushed back my cuticles already. I'm just carefully buffing around the cuticle. You know, a common question I will get, should you remove the natural nail? So if there's any free edge at all, should you remove that? It's really almost almost a personal thing, personal to the nail technician and personal to the client. Some clients, when they flip up underneath, they do not want to see a natural nail under there and neither do some nail techs. But sometimes it also can give us a good guidance of where it's naturally going to flow. But new, new ideas are coming in now where they just put the form in more of a straighter rather than a slight curve. So you may want to eliminate that natural nail so you can form it whichever way you want. So it doesn't really matter moving it or not, but like I say, if a client says to you, oh, I hate that natural nail underneath, well then, when you get the opportunity, you can take it off. Okay, so now, I'm just gonna remove the dust and I'm just going to put a primer on. Okay, so, Forming the nail, I've got lots of videos on this, and this is an art within itself. So if you don't know how to form just yet, give yourself some time on this, you guys. Forming is an art within itself. You can really, it's a foundation, right? So if you don't get it right, by the time you finish doing the nail, even if you do the nail perfectly, you might look at it and go, oh, I don't like it, it's too high up or too low. That's because of the form placement. So like I say, don't be hard on yourself on this one. This one takes a while to get. A lot of the steps are like that when doing nails. It's hard to form yourself too. I like a very tight form. I try not to cut it. Um, if I'm just doing myself, I could do that, take the time to do that. But when you're doing clients back to back to back to back, it's a more snug fit if you cut it, but it takes a lot of time to do that. 
And if you get a good form like these ones, then they generally fit just about everybody. Oh, that's a beautiful fit. Okay. Now, Karen Amanda, is this in your way? Should I put these down? Because I don't normally, but no, are it they? Seems, it seems okay? pretty good. Okay, so tools. I mean, how important are your tools? A brush. I designed this brush. It's an oval eight because, in my opinion, it does every nail, big or small. I'm not really into the big brushes. That can lead to a lot of allergies and stuff, so I, and I'll get into that in another video, but I like this one and I designed this one. It's a very high-end brush, but look at that point. That's That point comes in handy when you're doing a French. So what makes French so difficult? Well, for 30 years, I did it, I call it the traditional way, because some smart nail technician came up with a new way, which is the reverse method. It's brilliant, and that's the way to go. But because I've been learning so long to do the other way, the 30 years I've been doing it, I mastered the pink and whites doing it the traditional way, which is where you lay down the color first. So that's the free edge part. In this case, that would be the black. I'd put down the black first. But unfortunately, it can get your nail plate very dirty because you're going like this. So you literally have to clean the nail plate with something to, to, to get rid of all the black that's just smeared all over the nail. And sometimes it can really grab on because you've roughed the nail up to absorb product, right? So what makes this easier, and I'm even gonna try to break it down easier than that, is the reverse method where you do the pink first. But you've gotta wrap your whole brain around it in a different way if you're used to the traditional. If you're not, this is gonna be great for you because it's just new right out of the gate and you don't have to switch your mind. So by laying down the pink first, we then can wait for it to dry and then we can shape it with a file. Or if you're quite confident, you can just lay down the pink and then shape it as it's on there. But I will say how you shape the pink is going to be how the black is going to look, which is the star of the show. The free edge black or green or, or whatever color you're using is the star of the show. And if it's not proper and symmetrical, you're gonna be bummed. So when you're laying down the pink, it's all natural. It's all nude, more or less. So it's harder to see. Your mistakes don't appear until you put the black in. So here's a few tips about the pink that you want to make sure you get right. So we're going to lay some in the cuticle first. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use this. I need something to balance my hand on. I can't stress this enough that this is art. I did these earlier, and there's a good chance when I lay down the pink now, it might be a different shape because it's a different day. It's art. Art, art is very mood oriented, so it can actually look quite different. So we're gonna lay down the pink and try to match it up with these ones as best as possible. That's why it kind of is good to do it all in one session so that you have a flow of harmony through all the nails. So I'm just gonna grab a bead of this beautiful pink. And I'm just gonna focus on, see my brush is nice and clean at this point. There's no black in there, I don't have to worry about it. And I'm just going to focus on the cuticle. Okay, so not to be hard on yourself, we're gonna do this in a couple of beads. It's easier to do a one bead when you're doing with a client and not with a camera because then I can go like this and do like that. That's not as easy for you guys to see, so I have to do it at a completely different angle. I'd be hard pressed to get a good shot with you up on your face like I that. I know. That's why we do it like this. I've had to learn to do nails differently just because of this. I do this in class though when I'm teaching people. <laughs> right? Because I don't want to make them switch out of their chair. So I literally go over their shoulder and teach like this and actually I'm getting better at it. Okay, so right now I was just focusing on the cuticle. But here's the thing. So when you're doing a French design, that's my next video actually, <laughs> look out for that because it's where to place the smile line. So in this case, this would be a very, I'll take one of the ones that I've already done. See this one here? So there's several points to think about when you're doing a French. And that is, this point where you want the deepness, the deep part of the smile line to come down. And you want to think of how high on the side are you going to bring up that little peak of whatever color you're using. In this case, it's black. And I chose black so you could really be able to see it too. So it's coming right up on the side like that, okay? Sometimes you want to be really picky. This is in competitions, but you can match this point. You drew a line to the other side. Those two points, you should be able to draw an even line to make those points come up on either side. Now, having said that, this is a very deep smile line. Now, I will say, 
my nail bed is on the longer side, but you can create a longer nail bed. When you put a form on, you can actually take the pink. We're just talking about the pink right now. So we, you can take the pink and actually take this peak part way down further, right? And it'll make it look like your nail bed is longer. But if the client doesn't want the nail very long, then you have to make a shorter free edge, which in this case is the black. So, and don't worry about the shape so much. We can You can always shape it up later because you really want to take all the seconds you have in shaping the pink part and then when we lay in the black part. And shaping and, and finishing, we can worry about later. So right now, when I lay this pink on this nail, I've done the cuticle area. I focused on the cuticle and now we're going to focus on this part. So I have to really focus on this free edge where it's going to be and then focus on the side. So I have to make sure the pink comes way up on the side, okay? And, you know, give yourself some space on this. Don't be hard on yourself. You guys can be really hard on yourself. And I don't want you to do that because this really takes time. I took a lot of time to learn and master this. Give yourself time to do that. You can't get good at this unless you put this time in, unless you make those mistakes. It's really, really important. Also, one thing that makes this reverse method work so well is you make the pink, the nail plate part, quite high. Okay? As high as you can, really, without, you know, getting ridiculous. So when we put the black on everywhere, if the pink is really high, we can just file it and the shape will come up. You'll know what I mean when we get there. So let's do a higher pink bead and then figure out how far we want to come out. So we want to match these guys. You can actually see the little pink. Can you see that, Karen How see that the pink is sort of peeking up over the edge on this finger in particular? Yeah, I, I can kind of see yeah. that. I think I know what you're talking about. So we want to maybe extend the pink a little bit past it. We want to make a real nice oval shape. So let me get a thick enough bead. And we want to, sometimes you can do it this way if you like. And now we want to start bringing out where we want to see that point, and we got to make sure we swoop it up on the side. We do not want to have product too much on the side because we want those little points to come in. So Cameron, I do have to flip it over this way a little bit. So the whole idea here is to make sure that you've got the shape that you want. Now, if you can do this with the acrylic, all the power to you, but if you're not quite happy with it, that's okay. We're gonna take a file and we're gonna crisp that edge up. So don't worry about this if you can't do this with acrylic. After you do it after a while, you might get better at it where you can just do it by laying in the acrylic. What we wanna do is create a wall, a wall of acrylic. I'm also shaping it to see if it's got a point like the other ones. I want to make sure it matches. It doesn't really. So I'm going to try to extend it a little bit longer. Now I am flattening it out a bit. I'm going to have to add to the surface again because I'm trying to worry about the shape right now. Okay, so the shape isn't bad now. I'm actually liking that, but I'm going to make it a little bit higher. I want to make sure that it is high enough and make sure that I have my apex in there as well. So at this point, I'll look at it sideways and I'll show you that. So that shows you how thick it is and you definitely, when the nail comes, if you look at this one, right? You can see the arch of it. We want to make sure that the high point is in the pink part. And that's what we've got here. It's pretty high in that area. Yep. Okay, so at this point, I will wait for that to dry. Now, what's great about it is the pink part is absolutely pink. There's no residue of any black or whatever color you're using. It's not going to fall on there. And when it does, it doesn't matter because the pink is so high. When we buff it all up, it's just going to reveal a nice crisp line. Still one more step to do before we get to that line. Okay, so we'll just wait for that to dry. Okay. So at this point, it's just curing. Now you can either take the form off or you can leave it on. And at this point, when we put the form on, it was just to catch this little bit on the end. 
If you take it off, you're gonna have to reform it. Some of you may find that a little bit harder. It is harder to reform something when it's been on, but it's just a little tiny bit on the free edge. If you wanna leave it, it looks like this. You can use the medium or the coarse. I'm gonna use the medium. And what we wanna do is we wanna take that edge of your file, and you remember that little point part on the side? We wanna make sure we bring the file right up on that point part. We wanna do both sides. I'll show you what this looks like with the form on and then with the form off. So when you're using this file, don't angle this file in this way. Don't angle it so much this way. You want it to be as straight up and down as possible because what you're doing is creating a very vertical straight cliff. So at this point, if you're doing all five fingers or 10, um, you can see all your little pinks and you can measure them all up and make sure they're all looking very uniform. It'll be easier to do without the black on them. You, this, is, this is the point where you could just make sure they're all nice and even. So you can do that right on the form or you can take the form right off. You could keep this little form in its shape just like that. Don't chuck it. You might be able to use that. Okay, so if we're just starting again, you can literally just take your file, just make sure it's straight up and down. Don't angle it at all. And then just file away till you get the shape that you like. I will actually fuss and spend a bit of time doing this because this is what creates that perfect smile line. I'm just sort of comparing it to the other ones, making sure it's the same as all the other pink ones. They call this a kind of a deep smile line because I'm bringing the points up really strong and this part goes down pretty good. You can even make this kind of a shape or uh, a little bit more of a round shape. I'm going for quite an oval kind of shape. Okay. That's the scary part because you'll see why next. By the time I lay the black in, I'm going to know if this is good or not. <laughs> so you got to really be good at this part. This is the part you want to practice because this part is super important. If you don't get this right, the whole design won't look good. But practice, practice, practice. Don't be so hard on yourself, you guys. This is a hard one. And French is coming back, which I'm excited about because I love it. But it takes some practice. Okay, so now I put the same form back on in the same place. And now I am going to, the beauty of this part is for the most part, you can just put the black pretty much anywhere. I don't, but you can, and I'll show you why. Okay. Now again, whatever color you're working with, this applies to the white too, right? And every color between white and black, doesn't matter what you're using, this will apply for everything. Okay, so what I will do is take a nice bead of the black and I will lay it right in here and I will press it into location. Now what I will do is turn it sideways so you can really see I'm going to push the black up into a tiny little point. This is why it's so neat to have a pointy brush or have a point on your brush. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it so you can see it. This is where I want my point to come into. I said, don't worry about the shape. Don't worry about the free edge right now. Okay, so you want to go get a tiny little bead. Now this side is harder for me to do, especially on camera because it's on the complete opposite side. It's really hard for me to twist and keep my head out of the frame. 
but I'm going to take a tiny little bead and I'm just going to kind of roll it into that corner. Now I'm trying my best not to get it on the skin. And that's why I suggest you don't kind of just ply it everywhere because you might end up with some of it on your skin. And you kind of want to avoid the monomer hitting the skin all the time because that can lead to allergies and contact dermatitis. So you can see that, I mean, it's getting kind of picky, but the points do pretty much line up. If I file that away, I think they're still going to be on point. <laughs> I know, it's corny. But look at this, okay? That is just from one bead and two little tiny beads. That's the residue that it can leave. And if we didn't put the nail plate down first, as in the pink color, the nail bed part, it could stain the the natural nail plate. You've already got primer on there ready to go. And even if you didn't, the nails buffed up, it's going to soak in any color, especially the black. You're really going to see it. And then you have to clean it off. It's a pain. Trust me. I've done it that way for years. This is much, much smarter. Now, so remember, we don't need much more black because we made that pink layer so high that it looks like it's kind of dropped down. We're just going to put another bead of black in the arch, the apex, the stress point and sort of spread it out through the rest of the nail, make sure that we have enough nail happening there. So when we do file it, we're confident we wouldn't have to add any more. You don't want to do that after the fact. Okay, we're almost there. So we're just going to pat this into place. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, but look at my brush, eh? It's like full of black. So just make sure I'm going to show you how dirty it is and we're going to clean it. I got lots of black in there, so I'm going to get some monomer and I'm just going to twist it because I want to keep that point. And I'm just going to twist it until the color runs out. I find the darker colors, you know, like a deep red or brown. We don't commonly use brown, but black, um, a dark blue. Anything like that with a lot of strong pigment. I mean, white can have a strong pigment too, but it seems to come out a little bit faster. But black is like the worst. Black almost is more like soot. These powders are fine, but black I find is even extra, extra fine. So it really gets in everywhere. Okay, so I just do this until my brush is clean. There you go. Now I, I will say, you guys, I love me brush. And I take care of it as best I can. But if you do get a clump of acrylic in there and it dries and you didn't catch that, don't sweat it. That happens. Don't be hard on yourself. I did it with a $200 brush once. I was not happy with myself. But you can put it in acetone. I know some people are going to freak out when I say that because they're trained not to put their brushes in acetone. You don't want to leave your brush in acetone overnight, but you can do it for just a few minutes to inflate the acrylic that's on there that's hardened and it breaks it down and it just comes off. Or if you find your brush is full of glitter and it's clumpy, you can clean it up in acetone just a few minutes in there and it really loosens it. But you always want to finish it and condition it in your monomer. With the acetone, you'll just go like this. Acetone, is it evaporates very fast and it'll be gone in a second. Then you put it in your monomer. You condition those bristles in the monomer. It's perfect for it. Perfect. I've done this for years. Trust me. I know. I know. It works like a charm. I don't particularly like a brush cleaner. Uh, brush cleaners, I don't know. I just had some issues with brush cleaners. But I just clean it in the monomer. I leave it in there. I wipe it a little bit. Bring those bristles to a point. That's why I have a cap. You pop it in there and that will protect it and make it nice and soft. It won't go crispy or hard or anything. To the next time you use it, this brush will last you a very long time if you take care of it. It's my favorite. Anyway, okay, so this is drying up. It's curing, and it is about maybe 90 seconds, depending on where you live, the humidity, the heat, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of cold in this room. We have a blizzard happening right here. This is the first official video I've shot for 2020. We had some in queue that we were able to put in through January, but this is the first one for 2020, and it is blizzarding. We're kind of housebound, aren't we, Karen? We can't even get out of here. I'm not leaving. No. <laughs> we got a lot of snow out there. For us, Victoria... It's mostly just rain in the winter, but we've been hit by, I think we've got over a foot. I personally love it. It's probably, a, yeah, at least, you know, 15 inches, I'd say. I love it. He no likey. 
Eh, it's pretty looking. I mean, you don't like it. You can't mountain bike ride in it. <laughs> Who does that? I do. <laughs> well, I'll go walking in it this afternoon. Mm-hmm. And I love that. And uh, but I love it. I think it's gorgeous. Okay, so I'm just waiting for that to dry. And the telltale of how good a job I did is when we file it. So we'll just wait for this to dry and then we'll file it up. Not yet. I'm impatient. I have no patience when it comes to drying, acrylic drying. While we're waiting, I just want to tell you, I have some classes coming up. I have a three-day course in Victoria, BC in February. And I have one in March, one-day class in Vancouver. We're going to do shaping. This is something that everybody wants to know. I'm going to add it, of course, in both classes. But you can check nailcrew.com on my events page if you're thinking about going. All the information is there. So this is the test. It's dry. So how I take a form off is I pinch it on the bottom, and then I release the little wings, and then just you're good to go. Okay, so this is the telltale, you guys, <laughs> of how good... I want to say we, because we're doing this together, but it's all on me, right? So I'm going to take my course file, and I'm going to start shaping it up. I can usually determine my shape and my length first when I'm filing. The length is actually pretty good, so I'm just going to determine my almond, pointy almond shape that I've got going here. Somebody called it a Susie shape, because <laughs> maybe it's not really pointy, and it's not really almond, but it's sort of a combination of the two, and so someone says the Susie shape, which is... I kind of like that. It's cute. Okay, now let's file the surface and see how good or bad I did. Like I say, this is a scary part for any nail technician, experienced or not. I mean, the more experienced you are, the more confident you're like, oh, no big deal. You don't even worry about it, right? So what we're doing is we have the pink up here, the black here, we're bringing the pink down to match the black, and that's what's gonna reveal the crisp line. Even though there's so much mess here of the black, you can see it's a mess. But once we file all that mess away, we're gonna hopefully reveal a nice crisp line. And you do wanna use the coarse file with this. I was getting a little nervous because it looked kind of icky here, but if I just keep filing, because some edges you'll get will be pretty sharp. And you'll think that it's, you're done. You, thought, you think that's the point where you want it. But if you go a little bit more, it might be sharp, but it's a wobbly sharp. But keep filing past that and you'll take out the wobble and hopefully reveal that crispness. Under, and then you're looking at that kind of point coming in and making sure you're just shaping it up at this point. And then I'm going to take my fine file and go over to smooth the whole nail completely over. And it's looking like the line is crisping up really great. And I'm just kind of going into the cuticle. Now, sometimes black can really kind of settle into the cuticles and stuff. That's why you gotta be really careful you're not working with a too wet of a bead because you don't want it to kind of flood into there and just leave black stain everywhere on your cuticle. Working with the proper bead right ratio is super important because if you have too much monomer versus powder, if it's too runny, if it's just running, that's not a correct bead. That can lead to allergies. So the right liquid to powder ratio is so important. That's why I'm such a stickler for it because it's so important not to be able to develop allergies from a runny bead. Okay, that's shaping up quite nicely and I'm just getting it nice and smooth around the cuticle. Yay! I actually did it. Okay. You know how many times I failed at this before I got it right? Lots and lots and lots. So please don't be hard on yourself. If you are doing this and you're like not getting it and you're just almost there in one little edge, that happens. That's part of the learning curve. This is not an easy 
not an easy thing to do. This is one of the hardest nails to accomplish well. But if you're doing a clientele, you've got 10 tries to get better and better and better. Oh, and I also should tell you this. You can do nails like a French one day and you're like killing it. Like, oh, so good today. And then the next day you go down and you're just in the mood because you're so good yesterday. And maybe you're not killing it today. It's art. Again, it can be very different for you every day. I've had that happen. That might drive you a little crazy. Okay, that's beautiful. I love the arch on this. I was just looking at the other nails. This arch, that's the apex, right? This one is my favorite. This one is, but I was looking. This one's not so good. <laughs> that's a whole other video, but you know, you can be really critical on yourself. Don't do that. Don't do that, Susie. Okay. Looking good. So now I'm going to take, I have two other files in here. One is the sanding sponge. And the sanding sponge, I will go over the entire nail just before I top coat it. If I'm going to top coat it with gel, this is how I'll finish it. And it gives an overall smoothing finish. Now I will tell you, you know, while you're here, if you have a few seconds, I'm going to show you this. My final smooth and shine. My final file, this is a fantastic file. You can take the green side and I'll show you on this nail and you just buff it up like crazy. Then you flip it over to the white side. Watch this. You guys. Beauty. Now you can top coat this with a gel as well as I show you, but I'm going to show you this way. Okay, you put a little oil on the cuticle. Okay, look at that. Let's look at the reveal shots. So for education and to improve, it is natural to want to critique your work. And that is good. But just be careful you're not being mean to yourself. Do it in a very constructive way. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to critique it. So overall, quite beautiful. The French lines are very, very crisp. The arches are beautiful. I'm actually loving it. I will put a coat of clear on this as I've done and I'll go out and I'll enjoy these nails. <laughs> but if I'm going to have a super critical eye, I'm going to say that this shape of pink isn't really quite as matching the other ones. And this one isn't quite as down far. The pink, I'd like to bring it down a little bit more. And the sides are a little bit thicker as I bring it up as opposed to these ones. And this one does go up quite a bit more than this one. So those are things that I brought out that you can work on. But if I did this for a client, I certainly wouldn't stop them and redo it. I would let them be on their way because most people would not pick that out. I'm sharing that with you and now you know my flaws, but that's how we get better. So I want to say you can critique yourself, but just don't be mean to yourself, okay? Well, they're beautiful. Thank you for joining me, you guys. Thank you for joining me for my first 2020 video and I'll catch you in the next one.